Moscow terror attack. Three of four suspects pleaded guilty. Indonesia's earthquake has damaged thousands of homes. Prime Minister urges rapid implementation of laws on land, housing and credit. You're watching today's news on NTV channel. My name is Ha Zhang, your host. A Russian court has charged four suspects of terrorist acts related to an attack in a concert near Moscow that killed nearly 140 people. According to Russian media, three out of the four suspects have pleaded guilty. Russian Interior Ministry said all four suspects are foreigners and are among 11 arrested following the attack. The Russian court released video footage of suspects being led into the courtroom with their hands handcuffed behind their back. According to Russian media, the suspects are all citizens of Tajikistan, a country bordering Afghanistan where the terrorist group is are operating. This group also claimed responsibility for the massacre in the outskirts of Moscow, resulting in at least 137 fatalities and 182 injuries. The Moscow court's statement declares that all four suspects have been indicted for terrorist attacks leading to fatalities and face life imprisonment. Thousands of houses have been damaged and over 15,000 people have been affected by earthquake and a series of prolonged aftershocks off the coast of Java, Indonesia. Meanwhile, a district in Hanoi also experiences slight tremors due to earthquake. The Indonesian Meteorology, Climatology, and Geophysics Agency reported a 6.5 magnitude earthquake occurring off the coast of Java on March 22. This was followed by a series of small earthquakes and over 200 prolonged aftershocks, causing significant tremors in East Java. Although there were no human casualties, the earthquakes and aftershocks destroyed at least 4,300 houses, school and hospital buildings. More than 15,700 people lost their homes and had to be evacuated. Meanwhile, in Vietnam, an earthquake of magnitude 4 on the Richter scale Allos hit my duck district of Hanoi capital early on March 25 morning, causing slight tremors in high-rise buildings. Relevant authorities are monitoring and evaluating this seismic activity to provide an official conclusion. During a session on legal construction on March 25th, Prime Minister Phạm Minh Ching emphasized a need to quickly implementation of laws on land, housing, and credit to remove institutional obstacles and unleash resources to boost development. At the meeting, Prime Minister stressed that institutional perfection is one of the three strategic breakthroughs that receive special attention of the party and the state. Along with the construction of laws, the Prime Minister also urged ministries and agencies to focus on drafting decrees and regulations to specify the laws, especially the laws on land, real estate, housing and credit. At the same time, building new mechanisms and policies to adapt to the fourth industrial revolution, promoting digital economy, circular economy and emerging industries. Coming up next are some updated news. Implementing the Prime Minister Directive on March the 25th, Nghe An Provincial Party Secretary Thai Thanh Quy inspected the project to build a 500 kV electric transmission line passing through Nam Dan, Nghi Lok and Yen Thang districts. The project segments have 50 km long and is now leading the country in terms of progress. However, there are still obstacles regarding the compensation and land clearance at some power pole construction sites. At the working session with the investor and three localities, the provincial party secretary requested the investor to focus on directing the construction, security, completing the procedures and resolving obstacles. 
Local authorities and departments need to collaborate closely to address emerging issues and firmly devise support plans for compensation and land clearance work. The People's Committee of Nagi and Province has approved the construction of the Information and Communication Technology ICT architecture for the development of Smart Cities, version 1.0. This is a technological framework widely applied in digital and information infrastructure, serving as the basis for smartening urban technical and socioeconomic infrastructure. Nagi and ICT architecture for smart cities aims at setting the vision and building overall long-term plan, while ensuring consistency and sustainability in the city development. It will provide an overall basis for localities, businesses and sectors to figure out a plan solution and apply ACT in building smart cities. The Preventive Health Department under the Ministry of Health has advised people to take preventive measures after a young man in Khan Wa died from influenza A, H5N1. Six outbreaks of avian influenza have been reported in six provinces and cities since the beginning of 2024. Transitional season with unusual weather provides favorable conditions for disease-causing pathogens. To prevent avian influenza from poultry to humans, people need to take good preventive measures such as not slaughter, buying and selling, eating sick, dead and unknown poultry products, limit contact, slaughter, eating wild animals, especially birds, seeking immediate medical check at healthcare facility if symptoms of influenza such as fever, cough, chest pain or difficulty breathing related to poultry contact. Preparing for the launching for Gela Tourism Year 2024, many activities have been held to create a good impression on visitors. With the theme Gala Aspiration Signs, the beach town is building connecting programs that are deeply imbued with the local cultural identity and the breadth of a coastal town. Paintings of sea daisies, the symbol of tourism in Gala, or assembling the map of Vietnamese schools by Gala students, have left a lasting impression on viewers. This activity aims not only to promote the special symbol of the coastal town, but also to introduce the tourist destinations of Nghệ An province, including Cơ Lo. Additionally, there are festivals at historical and cultural rallies to attract visitors. To welcome the tourism year 2024, Gi Thuy Ward is organizing several welcoming activities, starting with the Mai Bang Temple Festival to introduce the distinctive features of fishermen in Kua Lo coastal area. This year, Kua Lo will kick off activities earlier to start the tourism year. Many special programs have been and will be organized to boost tourism and attract more visitors. The interconnected programs are deeply imbued with the local cultural identity, reflecting the changes in Kuala during its development and integration. This March, many activities will be organized to kick off the tourism year, starting with the Sea Daisy Festival, elegant beauty contests, skilled electric scooter contest, painting competitions and creation of check-in points. Along with cultural, art and sports activities will be street music and pedestrian streets until April 30th. Gala is ready to welcome visitors and the attractions of the upcoming and ongoing programs will promisingly bring visitors many exciting experiences. The last news has ended our bulletin today. Thank you for watching and see you next time.